So I'm Grant Fowler and I'm a professor and chair of family medicine at um, John Peter Smith, which is the Tarrant County Hospital here in uh, Fort Worth. The name of the textbook, it's the fourth edition of uh, Finnegar and Fowler's Procedures for Primary Care. We're assuming somebody that's doing these procedures already has the learning and, and ed experience and, and skills, hopefully within their residency training or wherever they got their training to be good with it. It's really more meant as a reminder in case they haven't done the procedure uh, for a while. It's also helpful for the team that would know how to set up instruments or perhaps you have an MA or nurse that's not done a procedure ever to kind of review and to know what kind of things to anticipate. And it's also great for, for training for uh, uh, medical students to review and get ready if they've never seen a procedure before. That said, it's not just physicians. We have a lot of uh, physicians' assistants, so it's, it's really meant for anybody in primary care that might be doing a, a procedure. This current edition, we didn't need to add many sections, but the one that was added is urgent care because we see primary care docs and, and clinicians coming out of their training, working straight in acute care and urgent care, sometimes even emergency departments and things like that. And this edition is the most um, evidence-based. When I was training, there was no such thing uh, as evidence-based medicine. We looked at studies, but we didn't have the level of evidence. Um, now there's big meta-analysis and systemic, systematic reviews of the literature. And so this is the most evidence-based version and all the stuff in urgent care that is evidence-based, we moved it into that section, such as zipper injury was, was one of the new additions. What if you get um, something caught in a zipper? You can actually break the zipper in several different ways to kind of um, uh, disconnect it. So some other commonsensical things, but all the urgent care things were also updated. But it shows the diversity that we do within primary care, some of the things we can do. Um, and this also hopefully keeps our skills up um, and good in the areas of the things that we are doing. And if you're starting brand new with a procedure, pick the low risk cases. Don't pick the most complicated patients or cases when you start. Pick low risk cases, have a good mentor, go to a course, get you some numbers by experience and training. You might have gotten them in residency. Um, if not, find a place um, and hopefully that would be your mentor going forward. Um, I like life-saving procedures and I like life-changing procedures. And so one of my favorite, and I've watched the evolution, vasectomies used to be done in the main OR, and the technology has evolved. In fact, the technology has evolved even since the book came out. Something came to me new in terms of a possibility. And, and so to me, that's a life-changing procedure, um, but life-saving procedures, cardiac stress testing is, is one of my favorite. And the other, of course, is colonoscopies. Um, it's the single, single most preventable cancer uh, of anything we have in the U.S. And if you get your colonoscopy, we would knock out probably 99% of colon cancers. But preventing colon cancer, managing and preventing cardiac disease, and life-changing procedures, those are, those are my favorite. But I recommend at the very beginning, um, that to, to start with the reading at the very beginning, and especially even medical students. And that's one of the things that the, the book is helpful for, reassuring you. Um, but choose your simple patients first, and choose your uh, simple procedures first. That's, that's the approach to it. Credentialing, it, that's a, a, a very favorite question by the medical students going, so we can do these, how do you get your credentials? If you're doing something in the office, there's really no credentialing required. Now that doesn't mean you should make sure it's, it's very safe and that you're doing a great job at it. The, most of the credentials are required if you're doing procedures in the hospital. Now that's been the rule for a while. In primary care right now, in family medicine, probably about 70% of us are now employed. So if you're with a large organization, then they're now also starting to have credentialing in the office for some of these kind of procedures. So that's worth doing your homework for. And there's a lot of information in the book about getting credentialed for things like colonoscopy, things that are a little more complicated, for obstetrics, for those kind of things too. My favorite stories um, are from missionaries and military. 
I teach for National Procedures Institute, we frequently had had active military. Um, uh, even I had a, a, a military uh, physician that practiced in, in, in Gitmo in, in Cuba um, telling me stories that, that they were in a place, in a location where it would be two weeks to get back to the base and they had a complication um, and they needed to do a procedure. Um, and one of my favorite stories was a soldier going, have you done this before? And the, the medic or the physician saying, no, unfortunately, sorry, I haven't. And the, the soldier saying, well, are you crazy? You've never done this before. You're gonna try something for me, uh, on me for the first time? And the explanation was, well, it's in the book. And the soldier asking, what do you mean? You showed him the book. And he says, we have a choice here. You can you look at the book and I can look at the book or we can wait two weeks until we're back to base to get this splinter out of your toe or to get your toenail removed or whatever the kind of procedures it was. And, and more than once I've had a, a, a military soldier tell me that the soldier held the book for them and said, do a good job. I'm going to hold the book for you. So it's a lot of fun. And I've seen that I've had missionaries tell me the same thing. Mm -hmm.